Nearly 20 years later, and that song is still a banger. Word is around town, your mommy and your daddy made you to that song. Oh, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jet Falco, and it has been far too long since we've played a game on this channel. So what better game than the one and only Katamari Damasi? Ever heard of it? Have you ever heard of Katamari? Katamari Damasi. It's one of the zaniest, without a doubt, one of the craziest, quirkiest, and all around just weird games that you'll ever lay your sorry little eyes on. So sit back and enjoy as we absorb the, the wonderful eccentric eclecticness of this masterfully uh, crafted piece of electronic genius. Is that tootin' a torn too much? Perhaps, but I don't care because this game is good. If you've played it, you know. If you haven't played it, please sit back and enjoy. I'll play it for you. Yeah, it's cool. That's why people make video game videos on YouTube. Is people can't play the games that they want to play, so they watch other people play them. It's cool. That's what we're going to do here on the Jet Falco channel. Yeah, we've got our art, we've got our music, we've got our comics, we've got all sorts of greatness happening down in the workshop. But tonight, we're about to roll it all up, baby. Mind if I do a little voice acting for the King of the Cosmos? This guy's my favorite character of all time, so... <clears throat> Hopefully I... <coughs> I do him justice. Tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the... <coughs> Don't get too offended by my interpretation of the king, the great king of the cosmos. He's a very zany guy, very respectable, very royal, regal man. So we're gonna make him like a, an amalgamation of every king that has ever existed. Is that cool? Even... Like, even the king, you know? The, yeah, all sorts of kings. <clears throat> Here goes. Oh, hello, prince. This is the king, long time no see. We thought today would be a good day for rolling. The Katamari, the prince. Where the first rolls, the second follows. Roll, roll, roll. For that purpose alone, we went to the bother. The bother of making this space. The king of all cosmos. Going to the bother just for rolling a catamari. Just for that, we went to the bother. Where's the bother? Sounds like he's calling it a place. Oh, let's go to the bother. What are you guys doing this weekend? Wanna go to the bother? Let's go bother. So we would like for you to start the rolling, but... Uh, that is B U T. First things first. B U T. <laughs> Sounds like beauty. Beauty. Get it? First things first. Does the prince like vibration? Meaning the moving and the shaking. No, no, I hate it. Plain is best. I love going oh natural. If that's what you say, what you declare, then you can turn off the vibration on and off with the minus button on the controller. All clear? Yes. Oh, good. We shall see you later. Let's do roll forward, roll to the right, roll to the left, shift, do the quick shift, break, and do one of those. Okay. Very good. My very princely indeed. Such skill and such class. Dazzling! We feel a swoon coming on. Next challenge. Careful, careful with the look in the jump. Not easy to do when you're rolling in a hurry. We shall see you later. Whee! Boing. Quick turn. And one of these. And get down. What are you doing? And one of these. We nailed it. Oops, I forgot to zoom out. <laughs> we are in shock. We feel bested. Almost too elegant a roll. So fab. The prince is fabulous. Damn right I'm fabulous. Look at me. A little green dude with a pill for a head. Oops, I skipped the story. Um, basically all you saw was uh, the king flying into the cosmos and crashing over all the stars. It's funny how everything we have to do as the little prince, all the work we have to go through to recreate the universe, it's his fault. He's always the one who trashes it. Psh. And I think it was beautiful Katamari on the 360, where he was just literally playing tennis with his wife, the queen of the cosmos. Oh, such a 
beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous lady. <laughs> the apple of my eye. Uh, they were just playing tennis, and he served it too hard and serened the universe. He serened Venus. Venus. He venus Venus. Destroyed it. No, it was indeed not a dream. We really did it. The king of all cosmos has really done it. A sky full of stars. We broke it. Yes, we were naughty. Completely naughty. So, so very sorry. But, uh, just between you and us, it felt quite good. <laughs> Not that we can remember very clearly, but we were in all nature's embrace. We felt the beauty of all things. The fell for love for all. Did you, did you see? We smiled a genuine smile. Did you see? The star splintering in perfect beauty. So many things there used to be almost a nuisance. Such a mess. Now that there's nothing but darkness. <laughs> Tis but a dream. <laughs> but a beautiful one. B-U-T. Beauty. <laughs> See what he's doing there? That miraculous, fabulous moment has passed. It's over. We came to and found everyone furious. Even the king of all cosmos was not spared the wrath. Really, everyone was all right. So anyway, Pee Wee Prince, uh, hurry and bring back the glorious stars guy or whatever. Our problem, your problem. Yes, you owe us your existence. We collect on the debt, yes. Hand in hand, always there, yes. The very definition of a father-son bond, yes. <laughs> All right then, get cracking. A little bit of history of Katamari Damacy. I think it was created back when I was almost 20 years ago. Yeah, like 16, 17. 2005, I think, is when the first one came out on PS2. So, yeah, it's aged gracefully, that's for sure. There's like 10 games out there, and I've played like maybe half of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so small. You're as small as ever. We didn't notice. Not one jot with what the stars and all. What is that? That, that's, what is that? That body? That physique? Could you really be our son? Aha! I've got it! Build yourself up while you roll the Katamari. Work out and get bigger. Yes, indeed. Don't presume to take the escalator up to the throne just because you're the prince. Whew, hand it. <clears throat> First time on Earth means no worrying about time. We think we'll come to pick you up when that Katamari is 10 centimeters. Ooh, just remembered. Many things live here screwing around and generally getting in our way. When one of these sneaks up behind you, an alert comes on the lower left. That's where I am. That's me. Haha, <laughs> I'm the alert. Uh, okay, you should not try to bump into anything alive, but do not worry about it too much. It won't end the game or anything. Just relax. And... Good luck, Inchling Prince. Woohoo! All right, so. Ooh. Oh! The same thing! This was the very first thing we ever rolled up. So, it's a, like a, it's a thing, I guess. He used to be a roller too. Cool! I would love to see... I don't know if there's a game out there that explores the... Oops, he just fell down. That's not a good sign. Um, because there's some good stuff on the table we missed out on. Now we gotta stick with all this boring crap. Candy! Oh, I ran right into that... Freaking like an idiot! Some of this strategy I'd like to share with you. If you've never played a Katamari game, if you've ever played those freaking rats come out of nowhere. If you've ever played a Katamari game, you know what I'm talking about. Share your strategies down below in the comments, but how do you do it? This is what I do. I always typically go for things like those cracker cookie sandwich things that are just above my girth, you know? Like these whiteouts or liquid paper, whatever you call it. So I, I typically go for the item that is just a little bit bigger than all the other items I can grab at that moment, like these lipsticks. Maybe these toenail clippers. Nope, too big. Uh, not Can't get the clippers, but I can get this battery, which is right at my range, see? And boom, we made it. That was quick. Oh, you made a 10 centimeter Katamari. Oh, how fabulous. 
We'd forgotten all about that. Uh, surely, mostly clear on everything, we assume. Everyone on Earth is very nice and they're very helpful, yes. And they'll let you roll everything up with a smile, yes. Possibly also a wave. Anyway, let's go home for now. Rainbow! Judging on your experience with cleanliness and organization and keeping things tidy, especially when you're a kid in your room, that will gauge how much you enjoy this game. Do you like cleaning up your room? No? Well, it's actually the inverse relationship. It's the exact opposite. If you don't like cleaning up your room, you'll love this game because it keeps you from cleaning up your room. <laughs> Just play the game. Clean up your room, mom says from the other side of the house. Oh, uh, okay. Just pop this in the PS2. That's how we got shit done when I was a kid. No more tutorial. We did it. That was pretty fast. 10 centimeters, huh? It was the first goal, but it's not very exciting, is it? Next time we want a much bigger one. The thing that you collected the most of is snacks. Hmm, so it'll be a snack-related name for this star. My Earth is really full of things. We will now release it into the sky. Yes. Who cares about materialistic things, right? Throw it up into the sky. Here we are on the home planet. What? You forgot your own planet. Really? Oh, you serious? So you're not just small, but you're but slow too. <laughs> As a parent, we cannot feel but partially responsible. Sigh. This is your home planet. The planet where you live. Here you can look at the stars and everything the light touches. <laughs> and do lots of other things. You can even visit Earth in the Space Mushroom just by pressing the L button or R button. Does that sound like Mufasa? I've never done a Mufasa impersonation, so... Impersonation? More like in Lionation, because it's not a person. Roll your Katamari around Earth. Visit the Space Mushroom to complete against your, compete against your cousins. That's for multiplayer, I assume. And that's about it, your smallness. Do you get a grip, your abs? My likeness. I love how... how backhanded. <laughs> how offensive, honestly. How offensive the, uh, the king can get. <laughs> He's very degrading. That's how it is in Japan. I learned a lot about Japanese culture by playing this game as a teen. And yeah, it was like right as the anime craze was happening. The first really big anime revolution um, of like the early 2000s is when this game came out. I was like, this is one of my first exposures to like immersive Japanese culture being surrounded by it well, technically you're a ball picking it all up so <sighs> yeah learned all about it <laughs> learned all about this system the hierarchy of loyalty that they have in Japan it's, it's all about respect there and uh, rolling up your trash throwing it into space you should visit sometime it's fun today you'll be rolling inside the house the katamari should be uh, let's see uh, the full 20 centimeters this gets exponentially big. It just keeps going. Oh, we're in the basket. Shoot, that's not a good starting point. So one of the most challenging things with Katamari, for sure, is right when you're starting as a small ball, picking up small items. That is the hardest thing about this game. It really is. It's all about precision. Oh my god. It has to touch the bottom of the ball. See that coin? It's too big. Okay, moving on. <laughs> But it really literally has to touch the bottom of the ball when you're that small. And now when you get a little bigger, like this, you can start to, you know, be, pick things up by the side of your ball. Katamari. It's not a ball. Rolling Katamari. It's actually a living organism that becomes a star. Look it up. Just kidding. I have no idea. I'm making it lore on the spot. So here's that strategy again to pick up the things that are just out of reach. Just out of your main girth size. Oh, shoot. This is where the mouse attacks you. If you're smaller than the mouse, it'll attack you, which sucks. Okay, so now we can get the Legos, which is ne the next big item. The biggest possible items right now, I think, are the Legos and the batteries. See how fast we get with that strategy? It just, it's a win. It's a win. So we're already at more than half there. We can get, can't get the shrimp yet. We can get this, like, kale, parsley, barley, bar parsley. Get up there, dude! Ooh, that's probably one of the other most challenging things, is navigating some too tight spaces with our girth. My girth of my Katamari is just too much, too much at the moment, so you'll have to excuse me. Oh, I need to get back up to the table. 
see, we're at 13 right now. What are you doing? If anything scampers, roll it up before it runs off. Yeah. Look at all this delicious Japanese cuisine. Omelets and sausages. Must be breakfast. Japanese love sausage, too, for sure. I think every, literally every culture loves sausage. It's such a hard thing to make, if you think about it. It's just pig innards squished up into a tube of plastic that you can eat. What is that plastic you can eat anyways? The things that you wonder when you're playing Katamari. Now imagine playing this as a, a young teenager in 2005. Yeah. It messed with you. Give me some weird dreams, I'll tell you that much. Some very formative years spent rolling up trash in my parents' basement. <laughs> Put that on my tombstone. Not the pizza, the actual gravestone that is above my head when I die. So many years spent rolling up trash. Yeah, Katamari has one of the greatest freaking soundtracks of all time. If you couldn't tell, I was super excited to hum along with the beginning theme song. It's one of the coolest, coolest theme song melodies. Coming from someone who's made video game soundtracks and comic book soundtracks and uh, just a an aspiring composer in general, I have so much admiration for the guys who and girls who put this soundtrack together. It is so infectious in all the best ways that a, a music compilation would be infectious. And I looked it up and it's more than one composer. Each soundtrack is actually a, a, a group effort of several composers putting together some of, and it's, it's a Katamari of music, if you think about it. It's all the best composers for video games wrapped up into one big ball of tones. So supple and luscious tones. Even after 20 years, you didn't even have to remaster the soundtrack for the, the re-roll version of this game on the Switch or PS4. It sounds great. I looked it up on YouTube and just listened to it while I worked today. Oh no. Oh no. Get out of there, son. Oh, that was close. We were losing girth. I think we lost like 20 items there. That was cr again. It happened again. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. I have a solution for this. Yeah. Space the other direction. We lost so much. Holy crap. Let's go to the shrine. The axe shrine. Shrine. It's got a little hefty axe hatchet. For uh, creating wood. Wood-based uh, furniture and apparel, merchandise. Ugh, so many tangents. I would fit in very well with the King of the Cosmos. And keep very good company with him. We have all the tangents and random stuff we roll up in the conversation. You know, we rolling up in conversation. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, you can go up here. I remember this. There's some bigger items up here that I, people tend to overlook. Sponges. Ooh. Oh, I found the present. Sweet. It was on the Santa. I think. There's uh, a lot of people don't uh, think about like the actual philosophical aspect of this game, but uh, as I got older, I kind of I feel like I I'm trying to trying to get into the philosophical part. It's not just about like kids cleaning up your room and you know cleaning up their room and keeping things tidy, because that's always been a, a major as aspect, a pillar of Japanese society is to stay tidy and organized. But there is a huge uh, philosophical thing. I forget what the word is. Uh, when uh, it's, it's an art form when a Japanese artist or pottery creator will create the most beautiful pot or vase that they've ever created and it's their life's work it's their magnum opus of clay artistry right and then they'll take one evening and just just throw it they'll just destroy it <laughs> it's freaking hilarious right no it's actually freaking amazing because what they do then after that is they realign the pieces like a giant 3d puzzle and reconnect everything perfectly with gold inlaying like lining so it's like veining, gold veining that puts it all, gold glue, essentially, liquid gold, connecting everything, putting together. And it's an art form because you start as a vase that gets shattered. Something beautiful goes through so much pain and torment. It just literally destroys it. 
only to be remade anew. And that's like one of the most beautiful stories that a Japanese like philosopher or artist could ever come up with. It's freaking awesome. Just look it up right now. Japanese broken pottery art name. Kintsugi. That's it. Kintsugi. The Japanese art of putting together broken pottery pieces back together with gold. Gold. Built on the idea that embracing flaws and imperfections, you can create even stronger, more beautiful art by redoing your whole thing. I relate to that so much because many times when I'm making even these videos or my comics or my art, all, all sorts of random projects, sometimes one thing goes wrong and it's a cascading chain reaction that just destroys the entire thing in the process. So you have to, oh look, I got the present. It's a, it's a scarf, cute. We're gonna put that on, It'll look fabulous. But Kintsugi is, like, that's feels, that deep feels for me. You too? Let me know about it. One big project in your life in the comments that you have gone through where you put your heart and soul into that thing, only for it to be destroyed. And then you take a few minutes, maybe days or weeks or even years, to just recollect your thoughts, and then maybe one day you revisit it and put that thing back together even better than you could have possibly imagined it was before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our button, what? Our button, oh, I press the R button. Oh, it's just a story. These are, these are funny. I'm gonna step back, I'll step back for this. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. I love this little story bits that they throw in there because it adds quite a little bit of lore to the story if you really study it. So how does Kintsugi relate to your life? And how does it relate to Katamari Damasi? Or this whole thing where we're seeing a bunch of broken pieces being thrown all over the place and we're the ones who get to put it together into something more beautiful. A star, a friggin' source of light and energy in, in the cosmos. Botarde. I think that's freaking beautiful, right? Yeah. Have you ever been to Portugal? We were there yesterday. We hope you can visit during the day's rolling. Like that's possible. Oh yeah, it's almost real. Oh yes, a royal present for the hardworking prince. That's what we were thinking, but we sort of tossed it down to earth. We had an issue and sort of just pitched it away. <laughs> but roll it around somewhere while you're at it. It's somewhere. Pick it up. Thanks. You could have just handed me the present. Thank you. Thank you for throwing it out there where some random kid could just pick it up. Luckily, humans in Katamari suck at picking stuff up. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Let's clean this mess up. Rolling around the town. Here we go. 50 centimeters. Good lord. Okay, we can do it. Stick to that same strategy. Items that are just big enough to add to uh, speed up the growing process. Add some girth to our big old bumble ball. You remember bumble balls? I'm talking to a very small part of the crowd here. Uh, oh, probably over 30 crowd. Just to gauge my age for you kids out there. But... Bumble balls were kind of a big craze, even before Tickle Me Elmo, I think. They were the precursor for children robotics. Children robotics, well, that sounds very menacing. That sounds like a freaking nightmare fuel. Children robotics, cyberpunk children, created by man to destroy your system of society. So Bumble Ball was the precursor to the children robotic toys, like robotic children toys, I should say. It was even before that robotic dog that would go yip yip and just like shake its head and it had a visor for eyes. Do you remember that? It didn't have eyes, it just had a visor. Like a, a she like it was wearing a bicycle helmet. Bumble Ball was even before that. It was the first like robotic toy, maybe even before the Furby. But basically it's a Katamari that vibrates. It's a it was a toy that went all over the place. It was a sphere just like the Katamari and the nubs were longer so it could really roll around around and stuff. So when you turned it on, it went everywhere, literally everywhere, and you couldn't catch the thing. It was funny, but it was really slow. It was, it was slow moving, but it was it was funny. 
my little brother had one, and I think I accidentally trashed it trying to roll it down some stairs or something. Sorry, you should get some big brother insurance, kids, because your big brothers are going to trash your stuff. Kind of like what's happening now on Katamari. I have a lot of admiration for the Katamari games, if you haven't, haven't caught on. Except I don't have a lot of admiration for the freaking cats that attack your little ball of yarn on here. Something I've always enjoyed is the music. And I, I'm gonna say that yeah, a different way. I'm gonna say that a different way every time we play a new level. Oh, by the way, have you heard this song? Do you like Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. I will um, be referencing the music many, many times in this game. It's so hard to play this and talk. It's like I'm a game show host here, but I'm playing the game along with you. I'm Regis Philbin playing Who Wants to Be a Million? I'm Alex Trebek, rest in peace, good sir, playing Jeopardy alongside you. Yeah, it's like the host is playing a game show, so if I s repeat myself, or if I stutter, it's... You understand, right? It is challenging. That monkey I cannot pick it up. I can, I can get this firework, though. Oh! Precision! Precision rolling. My strategy is always look for the items that are just under your girth, you know? Ones that you can fit in and raise your size a lot quicker, like the squid right there. Uh, maybe this shoe. No, too big. Uh, this tissue box, possibly. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> These taller things. Usually the things that are tall and skinny, because it goes on volume if, it, if it's a tall and skinny thing. That's my strategy. And as soon as you can hit bottles, another good strategy, go for the bottles. All sorts of bottles. Because bottles are not only tall and skinny, but they are wide. So they'll add a lot of girth to your bumble ball. You know what I'm saying, little kids. <laughs> Let's move on. Here we go. I like how each section is kind of themed. Like here you've got some uh, milk and uh, underwear. <laughs> This is like the red section, and I love how uh, this dude's like painting his car. There's paint, and the red's, red's everywhere. Red paint everywhere. Red watermelon. Red mailbox. Uh, red ladies in waiting. I think that's what they're called, those little dolls. But then the Katamari comes around and is like, Oh, you paint your car red? Cool. Let me just steal this. <laughs> I'm like, well, at least the guy's not out there actually painting his car, because he'd be pissed. I know I'd be pissed if I was painting my car in my workshop and then the, this, this little dude rolls up and takes up all the hard work that I've put together. I'd be pissed. I'd be so pissed. Okay, we, we made it with four minutes to spare. We're doing good. We're doing good. But now keep it together, okay? Steer clear of all the crap. You don't need the small items, just the big items. Here we are back at the beginning. We can pick up way more than we did before, that's for sure. With these pots, and we're throwing stuff everywhere. Come on. Literally keep it together. We can go up here now. Oh, yeah, this way. This is just one big loop. But we can pick up all these items that we couldn't pick up before. Like this ladle, these pots. And drop more items as we pick those up, for sure. Can we get up there? I don't think we've been up here yet. Awesome. Okay. This little cage. Yeah. Oh, another big strategy point is as soon as you can pick up fences. Go for all the fences and walls everywhere. As soon as you can pick up big parts of walls, like, ooh, we can take down this big cinder block wall for sure. It's my... Nope. Okay. What a letdown. <laughs> Top 10 anime betrayal right there. As soon as we... Okay, we can take it out. Yeah. You just gotta sense what your girth is and what items... What's the largest possible item you can pick up and then just charge at it. Because it doesn't matter if you lose a little bit. The little pieces leave first. The big pieces are crucial, and they'll more than make up for all the little pieces you left. Okay, so as soon as you can pick up walls, pick up walls. But as soon as you can pick up any sort of plants, planters, that are uh, plants in pots and planters and, like, sidewalk plants, the big ones. Oh, man, go for those. Those are high, high value items for sure. Hey, we're almost to 90. That's sick. I've never hit 90 before on this level. I'm so good. Minute and a half. I have one minute, sorry. Ooh, we can get those big signs now. Let's get those. And these planters. The cat! Go for the cat! It's gone! Where'd it go? Get up there, boy! Come on! 
I love this game when I was a kid so much that I sold a lot of my other PlayStation games when I was moving out to get some money to pay rent because the kids go through that. You know? But I kept this game and I kept its sequels. I still have like four Katamari games. I freaking love them. I never got rid of these, never got rid of my JRPGs, kept a few of the gems. So Katamari Damacy will always go down my Hall of Fame video games right here. And in my collection, for real. We just remembered something we have to do. We're zipping back to space now. Royal Rainbow. Zoom, zoom. 90 centimeters and nine millimeters. We are moved to tears by the size of this thing. It's so incredible. Happy, happy, so happy. We want to turn it into a same old stuff. Sorry, rolling a Katamari. Get some gassy. Whew. It's all that extra food that you roll up. I mean, apron that tells you it's all about cooking, this one. Story. Story. <laughs> I love how quirky the story is. And those faces are so expressive yet dead. So plastic and typical family, right? Hilarious. God, I hope this sound isn't too bad for you. If it is, my apologies, but you know, it's Kintsugi. We're starting with some broken pieces, all right. My YouTube channel has been around for a while. I broke it, I'm ready to put it back together, all right? So thank you so much for joining me for this first installment of reintroducing video games to the channel. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll stick around. Tell your friends about the channel too. Um, my name's Jet, and I just want to hopefully build a community of other gamers and artists and just creative people out there who are looking for a friend. So so yeah, I was really excited to get Reroll. It's one of my favorite games, and it's been remade in this beautiful crisp HD. Whew. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I really appreciate you, and hey, stick around. We're gonna have some a, lo a lot of good, fun videos coming your way. Check over here for some more gaming videos. Uh, over here for just a random video. You can always subscribe and support me on Patreon if you'd like to as well. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.